Hey guys, welcome back to Insight Tennis Tour Stroke Series. My name is Rick Oldroyd. I'm the president and founder of Insight Tennis. And today we want to talk a little bit more about the forehand. And we're going to talk about uh, a, little, a little nuance that you probably have never heard before. Um, and uh, it is a huge power source. The pros use it all the time, um, but it's so subtle that if you aren't watching for it, you don't know what to look for, you may not uh, see it. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm a big advocate that things happen too fast at the tour level. And the naked eye just struggles to pick up the truth. And so, for this reason, I believe there is a lot of misinformation and a lot of uh, misconceptions out there. And uh, so we want to talk a little bit about um, this, uh, again, little nuance that the pros all do on their forehand that, that gives them such tremendous power. If you've watched uh, the tour players, and even if they're not very big, uh, you know, physically framed, they still hit the ball so, so hard and with spin and weight of shot. And this is one of the reasons why what we're about to talk about today. So if you've ever wondered about that, uh, pay attention uh, to this video and watch it all the way to the end because we're going to have a special offer at the end of the video. All right, so first and foremost, I advocate the uh, semi-western grip on the forehand. Most people, or most pros rather, and most players, I believe, uh, play with a semi-western grip and it's probably the most widely used. I think it gives you the most versatility uh, in both power and spin. Um, and uh, so it's the one that I advocate. So the second thing, always on all of your ground strokes, follies, everything, I can't emphasize this enough, soft, soft hands. I wanna have soft hands on the racket all the time. I wanna hold the racket with a loose wrist and a loose arm. Uh, because there is the key to effortless power. Allowing the racket and wrist and arm to be loose so that it naturally releases where it's supposed to. That's what we want to talk about today. So first of all, semi-western grip. Um, easiest way to find that is basically bevel number four. If I look at the racket, one, two, three, four. Index knuckle, bevel number four, pad of the hand, bevel number four. Looks like that from the top, looks like that from the side. And again, guys, that's pretty darn close. There are some variations, but you're going to be pretty close with that. So first and foremost, nice soft hands on the racket. I, before I start to play, I always kind of think just be as relaxed and loose as you can. So if I'm relaxed and loose uh, on my forehand, the, the lag position will happen naturally as I start to uncoil my body. As I start to uncoil my body, that lag position happens because I have such a nice, loose, relaxed wrist and grip. So that's what we want to talk about today. We're going to create this lag position, but there's something that the pros do that no one is talking about because it's so subtle. And this is, they allow centrifugal force to catch up at the last second and release the racket head through the ball. It has been widely believed and too often taught, in my opinion, that I want to almost lock my wrist and keep my wrist locked all the way out through contact and past contact and then finally rotate over. But if you watch the best players in the world, specifically Federer, specifically Nadal, you're going to see that these guys, first of all, they hit through the ball, which we're going to talk about that in just a moment as well, and then they allow that racket head to release. but it's a product of the momentum of the swing. I want to be very, very careful and clear about that, that you don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I am not advocating to start rotating your wrist back here. That's not what I'm saying. But if I'm nice and relaxed and loose with my grip and my arm and my wrist, I can't stop centrifugal force from coming through at the right time. So what I want to do is I want to come in, I've got my good nice shoulder turn, good uh, unit turn, and I'm going to let go, step into the ball, and you notice now as I'm lowering the racket into position and I start to uncoil my body, if I have a nice loose relaxed grip, I'm going to actually, the racket will naturally seek that laid back position. But as I swing back to contact, I want to hold this position, but last second, and this is what we want to talk about today, the racket catches up 
and releases through the ball. So it releases out through the ball like this. And this is why when you look at Federer and you look at Nadal and those guys after contact, you're gonna see this position here with their racket. Their racket is pointing out, the wrist is in this position. And that's proof, po proof positive that the racket released through the ball like this. And this is the key, guys. So we're gonna demonstrate this uh, in another video, so look for that. But hopefully this will help you. Uh, nice relaxed wrist, loose arm, and allow the racket to release as a product of the momentum of the swing. Centrifugal force will allow it. So don't restrict that from happening. So here we go. Here, and then it's gonna naturally release through the ball. Okay, I'm doing this nice and slow so that you can see the release. And again, there is rotation, if obviously if I want a little more top spin, but you guys get the idea. And notice how relaxed and loose and fluid that is. That's the way it should look when you watch Federer and Nadal and those guys hit. But the frame of reference, last quick thing, is right here. Take a look after contact of Federer and Nadal and you're gonna see that position right there. Okay, that is proof positive that the racket released through the ball last second. So again, guys, hopefully that's gonna be helpful for you. It's a huge power source. Go out and try that. It is a, a very advanced move. So be patient with yourself, it'll take some time. Uh, but to go out and try it, it's gonna add some huge power, especially when you get the timing right to your forehand. If you like this video, uh, click the link below and subscribe to the channel. Visit our website at Insight Tennis. And if you like uh, what we talked about today, we've done a full course on the forehand, the forehand mastery training system. I'm gonna go ahead and include the link uh, below here so you can learn more about that and participate if you'd like to. Uh, this is a course where we talk about all the biomechanics of the best players in the world on the forehand. We're gonna do this for every stroke in the game. This is the first of many. We're gonna do the backhand, both two-handed and one-handed backhands. We're gonna do serve, volley, return a serve, footwork, mental toughness. It's all coming this year and will be coming in the subsequent weeks and months. So check it out, I'll put the link below. And again, go try this out. Remember, just in review, nice loose arm, loose grip, relaxed enough that the racket can naturally, as a product of the momentum of the swing, release at the right time back through contact. As I come into contact, I'm holding that position as long as I can, but centrifugal force catches up and I release that racket head through contact and rotates over. Check it out, guys, and like I said, hopefully this is gonna be helpful for you. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you next time out on the court.